So, originally, Megan was going to voice this, but she said there are too many weeb words, and uh, old James said, I know just the guy for the job, and called in the redneck weeb artillery. So, uh, let's go on with the story of the tales of Hida Ishigaki, the Crab Clan Samurai. My first L5R deck was a crab deck, Obsidian Edition. So when I got into L5R RPG, of course my first character was a crab. Like an actual crab. I consumed source material on my clan at a voracious pace, with the exception of the very first book of the Shadowlands. I have read every source book cover to cover that has anything to do with the crab clan or the Shadowlands. Hida Ishigaki is my crab. I shall now recount some of his tales. I keep, I keep picturing like a samurai crab. Get picked out as an emerald magistrate. Guess the crab's affinity for water does mean I'm good at spotting clues. Oh wait, testimony is the only real evidence. Huh. Oh well. Must be so I can spot tainted fuckers or something. Show up for my first day on the job, my battered ass Oyori. Tetsubo slung over my shoulder. Can't beat the classic look. Screw all that crustacean shit. Get looked at like I just crawled out of a midden. I cut my beard and everything too. Okay, well I lopped it off with my tanto, but still. There's an Isawa Water Tensai, her pet Shiba, Kitsuki of fucking course, and one of those mantis twats. Yeah, yeah, our cousins. I don't buy it. Osonowo was a fucking crab. You minor clan money grubbing peasant weapon swinging peasants do not get to call him your ancestor. His blood flows in my veins, literally. I can trace a direct paternal line all the way back to Hida himself, not just one of the samurai that took his name. Shujinja proceeds to cough up some blood during the meet and greet? The fuck? Weak smile, explains she's been sick since birth. Impressed by her ability to endure, keeping a proper face on when she was clearly suffering tough girl. The fact that Benton was kind to her doesn't hurt either. First job is pretty straightforward. Bandits need to be handled. Gotcha. Now I know why they picked me, of all people, for such a prestigious post. I'll spare you all the boring details of when as you'd expect. I drew lots of attention and shrugged off their pathetic attacks with my armor and strong earth that all crabs are blessed with, while the rest of the party took them down. The mantis helped a little bit, I guess. The Shujinja, though, didn't hurt anyone, not one offensive spell. She tried to hide it, but I saw her wiping away her tears after the fight was over. Huh, quite the softy. We head back to town and I decide to reward myself with some good sake. Wake up, head is fuzzy. Wait, what? I've never gotten so drunk I don't remember the night before. My liver is made of high-grade Caillou steel, for fuck's sakes. Roll over, head pounding. Stare at disheveled Tanazi, and a nice rack is peeking out of her torn kuma- Oh no. Screaming ensues. Roriki with Yari swarm into the room. I'm under arrest. Kitsuki scrambles to look for evidence. Man Tits starts asking around town, seeing if anyone saw anything. Shiba sharpens his sword. I said I was framed as a rapist by a ninja. Shiba puts his damn sword away. Well, now that's settled. Ahem. We're going to need some testimony on this. Maybe someone confessing to drugging you. Otherwise, as things stand, fuck my life. Begin the ninja hunt. Start with waitresses. Grill those half people. Grill them good. First round of questions reveal that one of them has the hots for the proprietor's son. I stare blankly. Kitsuki thinks he knows what happened. Bring her back for round two. Kitsuki lets her have it, spins this batshit insane story about how she spiked my sake for a guy, who promised he would smooth things over with the proprietor so she could marry the boy she liked. That is the most far-fetched... She breaks down in tears, admitting it. I want to go back to the wall where things make sense. Go find Water Tit Tensai. Well, this is awkward, but that's why I'm here. Apologize profusely for this whole mess. She gives me a smile that doesn't seem very sincere to me, says it's not my fault so she doesn't blame me. I believe her. Tell her it's still okay to be pissed about this whole thing, we only cleared my name. Still no idea who was behind it or why. There's that smile again. Our intrepid band engages in some more investigations, trails, and questions. I help by keeping my yap shut and punching things that try to run away when they get cornered. Heading to bathhouse one evening, dead body on the bridge. Well, that's not supposed to be there. Hey, peasant, 
Go to the inn and get the Kasuki, would you? I take a look without moving the dude. Big slice from shoulder to hip. Almost cut him clean in two. Learned a thing or two about anatomy and all that from a CUNY friend back home. I realized this guy was cut from behind. When the rest of the party gets there, I shoo off all the looky-loos. Mention that it looks like the guy was cut from behind. Kitsuki confirms this. Not at all hard to find his killer. The dead guy was courting the city governor's daughter. So was the Kakita that was in town. We confront said Kakita. He admits to the whole thing, but says it was a fair duel. Bullsh Shiba cuts me off. All right, testimony. The Kakita is a fairly high ranked himself. All word versus his leaves the matter unresolved. The Shiba then says it. That is bullshit and you are a murderer. Well, it's on now. Shiba versus Kakita Laijutsu duel at high noon. Why the hell did you stop me? I could have taken him. Incredulous stares. Well, if the duel proves that the Kakita was a murderer, then he should be executed, right? Or at least forced to commit Sudoku? Well, yeah. So then the duel is to the death, right? Yeah. Well, I've just learned the mountain does not move. I could have taken him. More incredulous stares. I pout as I watch the Shiba and the Kakita stare at each other for way too long. Shugenja girl's doing her damnedest not to fidget. Should I put an arm around her? Better not. Steel gets drawn, flashes in the noon sun. Turns out the Shiba's connection to the void was stronger. A wild monkey appears. We've made our way north, now in the lands of the Phoenix. Shugenjo informs us that her father is the lord of a coastal castle. Suggests we stay there for a bit before continuing on. Warm castle, futon, bath, sake. Yes, please. Meet and greet with her family. Her father is the nastiest case of resting bitch face I have ever seen, and I'm friends with that Kuni that never washes off his face paint. Mom is normal enough, seems a model Rokugani wife. I can see where our Shugenja learned her manners. Younger brother, not yet enrolled at a school. Older brother, Earth Tensai, like her father. The pleasantries drag on for fucking ever. Damn near everyone in our party is fidgeting a bit by now. Me and the Shiba are the only ones keeping still, but my legs have gone to sleep. Shujinja starts to shake a bit during the meet and greet. Dad switches bitch face from passive to active. My sensei would kill to be able to have a look of disapproval like that. She swallows, hard, several times. Finally, he waves his hand in dismissal. As we're following the servants to the rooms he's giving us, I notice her lips are bright red. She doesn't use makeup. I stop, grab her shoulder, and wipe her lip blood. She was having another coughing fit, but instead of letting it come up like normal, she choked it back as best as she could, then swallowed the blood. I look her dead in the eyes. Why? By now, all of us know how to brew her up her medicinal tea when she has her fits. I'm the only one who gives no fucks about propriety and holds her up when we're in public, though. There's that damn smile again. Oh, it wouldn't be good manners is all. Except she's coughed at plenty of times when it wouldn't be good manners. I want to press more, but the Shiba is glaring hard enough to light my beard on fire, so I let it drop. That night, shit gets real. I hear something that snaps me awake. Even after all this time away from the wall, I still sleep in my armor with a powdered wakazashi in my hands. But it's not Oni. It's flaming arrows coming from the sea. Or more specifically, the boats floating in the sea. The green and gold boats. Looks like the Mantis have decided to have yet another go at the Phoenix. Well, that shit's gonna be awkward later. Grab my Tetsubo, run down to the gate. Mantis pirates already swarming all over. We've got a real war on our hands. I do what crabs do and rush to the thickest part of the fighting. The crab are always in the vanguard of a multi-clan force, after all. Draw a line in the dirt with my Tetsubo. Mantis come to a screeching halt, trying to figure out why there's a damn crab in this phoenix castle. They rush forward. I was born to do this. I've trained for this. I fought on the wall against swarming hordes of chittering things and rotting corpses. Nothing can stand before my fury. The line holds. The monkey comes to join me. Bam. I'm on the ground, spitting up my own blood and teeth. The monkey drags me clear as a man to swarm around. Water Tensai uses her magic to knit my wounds closed. Not a scratch on me when I return to battle. Again, dominate the shit out of this battle. Where I walk, Mantis bodies litter my path. Monkey comes to help. Bam. And I'm down again. Go away, monkey, your bad luck. 
Don't you want me to get you clear? Get the fuck away from me, you goddamn jinx. Drag myself into a corner. Prop myself up into a cool sitting pose resting on my Tetsubo. At least I look good. Somehow, the others hold out and the night ends with the mantis being driven off. Man, I have no idea what the fuck is going on in this story. <laughs> I have no idea. Come the morn, Daddy Dearest is in fine form, accusing us all of being spies sent ahead of the Mantis Force. Because, you know, there's a Mantis in our group. And Emerald Magistrates do that kind of thing. And apparently his own daughter. And the crab almost died. Twice. You stay outside a ten foot radius of me at all times, monkey. Mmm, monkey. The Kasuki and the Shiba try, as gently as possible, to point these things out to our irate host. Spare me your trivial facts, plebs. Plebs. <laughs> I rule this castle and I've already decided what happens. I might be paraphrasing him a bit there. Our little Shujinja, Shuginja, fucking. Shuginja starts coughing again. She can't hold it back this time. It's a pretty bad attack. After everything that happened last night, I'm not surprised. I'm moving to catch her already. Her father is faster. Slap. How dare you shame me like that child? Mom stares on impassively. Younger brother on the verge of tears. Older brother hides behind his fan like a little bitch. We're all pissed. That's our little flower, our Hannah-chan. The gentlest, most kind-hearted person we know. She's saved all of our lives countless times with her magic. She has never once inflicted a single wound on anyone or anything. She endures a life of constant pain without a word of complaint. Now I know why she thinks so little of herself. Now I know why her smile never really reaches her eyes. I'm a hair's breadth away from becoming a murderer. I think the rest of our group will cover for me. She lays her hand on my arm. She knows what I'm thinking. She shakes her head and I restrain myself. Apparently this bout of child abuse has settled him down, like a drunkard getting his first swig of sochu in a week. He lets the matter drop. Our Shugenja does a sea ceremony, ceremony, tea ceremony for us all that night. I really don't want to, since I'm pretty sure I always spin the bowl too much, or not enough, and because I really didn't like the idea of having her sit there and serve me tea after everything she's been through. But then I realized that being an honorable person was just how she coped, so I went along with it. By the fortunes, that shit is bitter. Why the hell is it so bitter? It's supposed to be calming, right? I do feel calmer though, huh. Never been much for propriety, so I just tell her I want to speak with her alone that night. She's taken aback. A maiden shouldn't be unaccompanied with a man after all, but she said yes anyway. Deep breath. So, you know how crabs revere strength, right? Because Hida was the strongest of the kami? But he still lost in the first round of the tournament the kami held. That's because there's all kinds of strength, and he just didn't realize it at the time. Strength isn't just hitting things hard, or taking a crushing blow and cushioning it with your earth and your armor. A reed is strong, because it yields to the hurricane and never gets uprooted. She gives me the weirdest look. Uh, yeah. So anyway, what I'm trying to say is that I think you're strong. Really strong. To be honest, I'm in awe, and maybe a little jealous. She tilts her head and blinks. And I want to say, you're beautiful? Benton surely blessed you when you were born, and you're strong. Fucking smooth there, you dipshit. Just spit it out. I... I love you. I know I don't really have any property or anything, but I can trace a direct line back to Hida himself. I mean, my family split off from the main family back in the 8th century, so like, half the clan would have to die before I would ever get even close to being the Hida family daimo or something. Dare to look up. She's crying. You blew it, you fucktard. She throws her arms around me. What? Hugs me tightly. Dare to hope. You have been so kind to me. I always thought it was just pity. Where have you been hiding this philosopher until now? Don't give me so much credit. I'm still the same idiot I've always been. I just see that having been born and raised a warrior is not all that amazing, but I'm good at it. You, on the other hand, have been born and raised to be a Shugenja in the clan that is best known for their Shugenja. Yeah, but please, no more compliments tonight. My heart cannot take it. Because I must turn you down. My father would never approve. 
contemplate murder for the second time that day. She's right about him, though, and considering how she's an honorable and dutiful child, she will do as her father bids. Well, she's got other family members. Let's go see her mom. Find her mother engaging in some Akibana. Realize I only know that word because of the time I've spent traveling with our Shungenja. Sit down politely and wait to be acknowledged. Think about what I'm here to talk about. Decide to go full Dozega. Mother pauses when I do that, then goes back to her arrangements. Arranging intensifies. Arranging intensifies. Arranging intensifies. Arranging intensifies! I see. She's testing me. This family is fucking big on discipline. Fine. I'm going to show her that Crab's reputation for being louts is due to how he cut loose when we're off duty. When we're on duty, however, not even the lion can match our discipline. She gets up and leaves the room. Comes back. Sets down more flowers where I can see them out of the corner of my eye. Damn, did she uproot her whole garden? Settle in muscles. We're going to be here a while. She decides to open the door in the garden. I can hear some water trickling, followed by a talk. Water trickle. Talk. Water trickle. Talk. Water trickle. Talk. As my bat- <laughs> As my bladder begins to protest, I can see exactly how much flower arranging she intends to do. Damn, this bitch is merciless. The Sheba shared some techniques with me to help quiet my mind. I used them to bolster my formidable stamina. Finally a, may I help you from the mom. My spine cracks as I straighten up. Holy fuck, I never would have guessed that just holding still could hurt so much. Now to use some subtle innuendo and wordplay to dance around this sensitive topic while still conveying my point. I've seen the Kitsuki do that plenty of times in court. I want to marry your daughter. Nailed it. Whatever for. I had plenty of time to guess how she would respond and readied several responses of my own. Whatever for was not one I prepared for. What do you mean, whatever for? Isn't it obvious? Her mother hid her face with the sleeve of her kimono. It was a very nice kimono, fine red silk with gold threads weaving an intricate pattern I couldn't even begin to trace out in my head. I wondered when it was that I started to notice other people's kimonos and feel embarrassed by my simple gray cotton one. There's no need to be coy, Ishigaki-san. My daughter is ill. She is frail. Why would a crab, of all people, want to marry someone like that? Oh, this shit again. Fine. Explain what strength really means to mom. Her eyes, poking up and over that sleeve, go wider with each word. They threaten to engulf her whole head. By the time I'm finished, I'm talking to one giant eyeball. Given how disciplined this family is, it dawns on me just how shocking the depth of the crab philosophy is to the rest of the Rokugan. I'm kind of pissed off that this is so surprising. Pretty sure I didn't let that show. So, anyway, I was thinking you might help me convince your husband about this. She snaps back to normal in an instant, and her gaze frosts over. I've never really felt the cold, really, a gift from my ancestor on Sono Wo, but I had to suppress a shiver at that chilly stare. That will not be possible. The mother sighs, a surprisingly heavy one. My husband has many duties as Lord of this castle. He is also a candidate for the next Master of Earth. As such alliances must be made and favors exchanged. Favors. He thinks of his daughter as a favor to be traded. I know that's how it works in Roku Gone, but it's actually a bit rarer in Crab Lands than you think. Most families let their kids find a spouse on their own, though if you're not married by the time you're 25, the family will step in and find you a spouse. It's because we've got a high attrition rate. We need lots of babies and couples who love each other and have lots of babies. It's as simple as that. We crabs are a practical bunch, after all. Dejected, I take my leave. Well, now what? Her younger brother isn't even school yet, and her older brother looked like a daddy's boy. I believe I can help you. Holy shit, fuck what? Old instincts kick in as a world to beat the shit of whatever the hell managed to sneak out close to me. Check myself just in time to avoid killing her older brother. He stares calmly at my fist that's almost touching his nose. Smiles. It's true what they say. When you wake a crab, use a stick. Cough, straighten, regain composure. As I was saying, I believe I can help you. 
You only need to point out how little my father truly stands to gain from arranging a marriage for my sister. Huh? He smiles at my look of confusion. She has likely kept it hidden from you, the depths of her illness. The truth is, my sister is unlikely to reach retirement age, or even 30. For that matter, her illness means that the rigors of childbirth, no, even carrying a child in her womb would prove most likely fatal. The way he said all that with a smile still on his face creeped me the fuck out. So, as she is no good for continuing a line, she would best be regulated to marrying an old man with grown children. A plaything, if you will. Contemplate murder once again. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video, but it's time for some self-promo. So over the past few months, more and more of our videos have been getting demonetized than usual. A few people have asked about setting up a Patreon and it's not really our thing. We would much rather you check out some of our other sponsors or buy some of our models. But some people have still been asking for a Patreon so why not? So the Patreon is nothing special and we're not offering anything but our general channel support. If you guys have any ideas you would like to see in rewards definitely let us know down below. It really does help us make more videos our YouTube overlords would disapprove of. Also for you guys that dislike Patreon, because we know a lot of people can be iffy on them, we have a Kofi for one-off donations. We also just want to say a big thank you to anyone who does support the channel. If it's checking out the sponsors or buying the models, or even if you just sub to us and keep coming back for our videos. We really, really thank you. Let's get back to the video. Oh, I do hope you're not being put off by all this. I realize that she's not worth much, but you would still be marrying up. You would only need to sequester her for a year or so while having a concubine bear your children. No one would ever know. Kasada sama grant me the strength to persevere through this visit, that I do not commit double homicide and shame my ancestors. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised if the dad, older brother, or both were Mahao Tsukai. Actually, kinda hoping that at least one of them is. I managed to choke out a thank you to her brother for his helpful advice and head back to the Kasuki's room. Man tits is there. Great. So is the Jinx. I spill my guts. Tell them everything I just went through. I need to know about the proper thing to do in this situation is and I'm so far outside of what I consider normal I have no clue anymore. Do I win the approval of my prospective father-in-law by reducing the woman I want to be my wife to useless goods? Do I grab her and elope? Do I set this madhouse on fire and purge the empire of the insanity that dwells within? The mantis, with roaring passion that filled the room, told me to give up on her and try for someone else. <laughs> the monkey told me to elope, promised he'd cover for us. The Katsuki asked me what she thought we should do. I've got to go do something real quick. Find Naomi practicing her calligraphy. Sit down. Relay the stories of how I spoke with her family. She looks up at me with those sad eyes. I didn't want you to find out, but what my brother says is true. I know how important a large family is to a crab, but I will likely not be able to give you even a single child. Wait, is that why you turned me down? Not just that, no, I still respect my father- Bullshit you do! I've had it. That man treats you worse than an ETA. He shames himself, his house, your sensei, and you by failing to recognize your talents. You're a fucking tensai, and I don't believe for one second that you couldn't have children. Water is the element of healing, and crabs all have a strong earth. Our kids will be strong enough to live even if your illness makes it difficult. And I've got a friend who's a coony. He's always bitching to me about how every year they have to provide some new bit of lore or magical research in a big family meeting. I'm sure he'd love to work on some fortifying earth magic to help. I. Love. You. Her father's face went from pink to crimson to purple by the time she was done telling him her decision. It was the most satisfying thing I'd ever seen. No way I could keep the grin off my face as I watched a man I had come to detest more than any Oni have an aneurysm. I thought I couldn't get any happier. Then her father exploded in rage. He didn't say anything. He was too furious to speak. He just ran over to the little shrine at the far end of the room. 
and grabbed the katana that was there and ripped it free of its sheath and pointed it at me. I almost had an orgasm. I picked up my blade and strolled out into the garden, accepting his foolhardy challenge. I had just enough Iajutsu training that I could get my sword out in an instant if I needed it. My Kenjutsu technique was barely adequate for my sensei to teach me the secret of two pincers, one mind. But he was a Shugenja, an overly proud Shugenja, but a Shugenja nonetheless. The look Naomi gave me as we took our stances is the only thing that saved his life. But I got my wife. I keep picturing like got wife and like the crab rave dance in the background and I cannot, <laughs> I just can't, I'm sorry. I just see like this bearded crab like dunk dunk and it's fucking dancing with a fucking, <laughs> fucking Kenobo in his hand. I was planning on calling it a night but then I read some of the crap stories and decided to toss out a pair of quickies. I think they'll be quick. Sometimes things get away from me and I ramble. It's tradition that the husband goes on a year-long pilgrimage after being married to contemplate his new life. The husband's mother takes the new wife and teaches her everything there is to know about running a household. I don't have a mother anymore. Once there was seven of us, mom, dad, me, and my four siblings. But our clan's never-ending war took its due from the family. I was the only one left. Naomi was in tears when I finished retelling her this. Naomi's mother maintained her face though and nodded in understanding. I shall fill in for your departed mother then, and teach my daughter what she needs to know. Do you manage any land? Sort of? Mother-in-law gives me a smile that I learned meant, the fuck does that mean? We did have a jade mine, but it played out years ago. Ah, I see. I didn't elaborate on what that meant. The jade in the earth keeps it pure, safe from the taint. Many times when the creatures of the Shadowlands slip past the wall, they do so by burrowing through the tainted earth of the exhausted jade mine. Such a thing was the main reason I was the last living member of my family. I was fortunate enough to be left for dead by the swarm. Though I still bear a scar across my face in the shape of an X. Hmm. Who's this guy think he is? Scar from FMA? Can I be on the same level, bruh? The lines intersect just above my nose and between my eyes. Most people flinch instinctively when they first see my face. So off I went, pilgriming away. Really had no clue what the hell I was supposed to be doing. So I just went to a few random temples. Did hit up the main temples of Osonowo, Kasada, and Yakama though. Always makes me feel good about how many divinities once walked Ninjindo as crabs. The colors of the crab clan are blue, gray, and black. After a year of temples and monks and praying, my balls had gone through all th His balls? His balls. After a year of temples and monks and praying, my balls had gone through all three. Like, is this kind of prayer thing? I, ho I hope it's a prayer thing. <laughs> I, I don't know what he means by this. Okay. Upon my return to my only slightly dilapidated home, and my new wife attempted to give me the standard Rokugani greeting. No, just the first two. Naomi is a good girl after all. Welcome home, Screech. <laughs> I scooped her up, tossed her over my shoulder, and headed inside. The, Kisu the Kisuki looked up from the tea he was sipping. Ah, Ishigaki, we've got a... Nope, busy. Time passes. Not as much time as could have passed, given my endurance, nor as much time as my balls wanted to have passed. <laughs> Why is he talking about his balls? Why are you talking about your damn balls? Quit it. Nor as much time as my balls wanted to have passed. <laughs> but I wasn't about to kill my wife on our first time together. <laughs> what the fuck, man? The <laughs> Though there was extra time spent cuddling, I was a full foot taller than her and wide enough she could use me as a futon. Once I came back out blinding my party with afterglow, they let me know what our next assignment would be. Serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he meant his actual balls. Gotcha. That's that's, that's good to know. That's the <laughs> that's the end of the story. Uh, <laughs> if you like the story and others like them, be sure to like and subscribe to Nick Beardia. Click the bell icon so you know when the videos are released through the week. 
as well as, you know, subscribe, comment down below, all that fun stuff and all their join the Discord, watch community pages, the Facebook page, there's a, there's a Twitter, I think, too, all kinds of fun shit. Additionally, if you like fresh, new, hot off the press stories, a new story bun, hot out of the oven, come by Guard Beardia, where I am writing two brand new original stories called the Emily Bronze series and the Veil vale Rider series every week, a chapter a week, I'm trying anyway, a chapter a week. And yeah, come by Garbiria. Got my own Discord. Come by, look at some sweet monster girl titty and all kinds of fun stuff. So yeah, good times all around. But, hope you enjoyed the story. This has been Garbro, and this is Neckbeardia. <laughs>